Hey guys, I'm Will. I'm Adam. We are here in your shop. In my shop, in the office. In this my is some place we've never shot before. Yes. Uh, I understand why after the setup for this. <laughs> this is a bright light behind <laughs> this us. This is a huge light. It's a tiny little room. Joey's sweating over there. It is really hot in here, and it's not hot in the shop. But but we've got uh, a, a new acquisition or a loan. A loan. This is a. It's a new toy. Exactly. Um, back when I worked at Industrial Light and Magic, uh, one of the main tools I used while I was there, and Tori Beleche used to sing a song about it, was the laser cutter. I used the laser cutter all the time, and I would be walking down the hall, and Tori would go, there he goes, laser boy, <laughs> to Georgie Girl. Yeah, yeah. it's perfect. Um, so I laser cut everything, and I loved that tool so much. I used it constantly. It wasn't that I couldn't model make, even though people made fun of me for that, mm -hmm. it was that the laser cutter just, it, it works the way I think. And so I've been wanting to get one for a long time. I haven't used one since I left ILM. And Trotec Laser, uh, who makes some really nice lasers, they loaned me this puppy, the Speedy 300, for a few months to try it out. One of the guys we interviewed at Hackerspace once said that, you know, the laser cutter is like a hammer in that once you have a laser cutter, basically every project looks like a laser cutter project. It really does. And more than that, um, I learned to build stuff using these wonderful books written by an architect named Alan Rose mm -hmm. called The World at Your Feet. And they were landmarks like the Taj Mahal or the Empire State Building or the Sears Tower or the Brooklyn Bridge, but they were all in paper books. And it wasn't like you popped them out. You had to physically cut them with X-Acto blades and score them and glue them and it was laborious and exhaustive. Slot A into, into tab not even, A. Not no even slots. No, no, no. Oh, wow. It was like tab glue hold to that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you learn to build that way, you actually can then build anything because whether you're working with paper or wood or metal or cloth, sewing, welding, woodwork, they're all the same thing. It's planar forms meeting under certain rules. Mm -hmm. And so because I think like that, that's like the very first things I did as a maker, the laser cutter dovetails beautifully with my brain. We've talked about this before. Turning 2D flat objects into 3D objects is, is the base element of all making stuff. Exactly, and it can do some really nice things. Like you can draw a lovely gear and you can cut it out of, this is uh, MDF, mm -hmm. um, and I made hundreds of these things for the Matrix. When uh, we were working on the dock, we worked on the whole dock set mm -hmm. for Pyro to blow it up, and it had lots of gears and lots of little details. Those cool big chain link things. Exactly, yeah. I built all of those for the dock. The big chains that hold that open the dock, that gear arrangement, I worked on that. That was my project for a couple months. So at some point when you were doing that, did, did somebody say, this is an unnecessarily complex door? <laughs> of course not. We were we were in the employ of of of, of the matrix. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so to make this well, like, what's your process for making something like this? Or, or I mean, bigger. You can how big how big a, an item can you can you cut in this cutter? So this cutter cuts. Uh, it's seventeen by twenty nine. Uh, okay. So it's a very medium sized cutter. Okay. Um, I call it a laser cutter. Almost everyone refers to these as laser engravers because that's mostly what they get used for in an industrial sense. Uh, engraving keychains, engraving plaques and awards. The, the and stuff on the back of your iPhone. Exactly. Um, this one this one is 120 watts. Mm -hmm. It will cut up to half inch acrylic or half inch MDF, which is, that was a minimum require for me, requirement for me because I use that type of material a lot. Okay. Um, and it's actually got a kind of a nifty form factor if you take a look here. Um, the laser isn't here. This is the cutting head, but the laser's actually in the bottom of the machine, or in the side, uh, and it's a big long laser tube that is ported out to here using mirrors. Wow. So, so the, I always assumed, just assumed that the laser was here, but I guess a 120 watt laser is a pretty big item. It is a big item. You can't quite carry it around and it needs a big power supply. So then there's not, it's not even like it's piped in with fiber optics or anything like that. It's just reflected, 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 boom onto the surface. Yeah, with a bunch of first surface mirrors, you get the most laser power. It does make, uh, it, it does make for a difficulty because the laser cutter produces smoke when it cuts. Mm -hmm. um, and that smoke can get in the way of your beam or it can get on your first surface mirrors and burn right through them and they're expensive. The oh, optics so, for this are expensive. So if the mirrors get dirty, that the stuff that's on the surface actually heats up and it'll catch on fire? Precisely. Wow. It won't catch on fire, it'll just burn right through the glass or oh. it'll mark it so it doesn't work anymore. Nothing, nothing major. So you have to keep everything really clean. Um, it's an XY plotter and you, you direct it with software, with really pretty simple software. So can we talk about the software? Absolutely. Because I'm interested, I, yeah, I've seen uh, at Tech Shop they teach people how to use uh, laser cutters using like normal vector drawing programs like right. Illustrator, Corel Draw, or something like that. Is it, do you use something similar for this? Or um, it... with this, I draw 
the drawings for this in Rhino, mm -hmm. which is a terrific, um, really relatively easy to use drawing, uh, 3D drawing program. Let's take a yeah, look let's, at the software. Let's, let's, yeah. let's show, show. Well, we moved from the laser cutter <laughs> to the workstation. About 15 inches. I rotated, actually. Yes. Um, this is just a Windows machine yeah. with uh, some software on it, right? It's not very powerful. My friend Fawn put this together for me because he's the whiz with um, getting the software up and running. He's an old colleague of mine from ILM, Fawn Davis. He runs a place called Fawn Creative. I think the last time I saw him, he was wearing Stormtrooper armor. Very plausibly, okay. he was. Uh, so, this is Rhino. Rhino's, I've set Rhino up in a 2D view. You can look at it in four views, but all I need to look at is the flat laser cutter, and this is actually the bed of my laser cutter. Okay, so that's the size, that's your canvas that you have to work with. Exactly. I, so I've, I've used <coughs> CAD programs like SketchUp and, and 1, 2, 3D yeah. Design and stuff like that, the free stuff, but it, like I would never know how to start making a gear unless I started with some other source material or something like that. So, so what's, like, what's, how does that work? with Rhino. Okay, so Rhino, like AutoCAD, allows you to enter in auto lisp commands. It allows you to give keyboard, quick keyboard shortcuts to regularly used commands. And I do believe SketchUp now does this, uh, just not with the same robustness that Rhino does. I love SketchUp and I use it all the time, but yeah. for this, um, you know, at ILM, I spent five years just doing this really, really fast and using the key commands, and it's a very intuitive you process. You have a high level of proficiency here. Uh, you know, it's rusty now, but yes, okay. at one point I did. So uh, I would start with my command for circle, which is a double C. Uh, I can choose whether it's a diameter or a radius. I'm going to say it's a radius uh, of two inches, and there's, I've got a two inch circle. Okay, looks good so far. It's a nice, quick bang, it's done. So uh, I'm going to zoom into that, and let's say I want to make a gear tooth. So I'm going to design one gear tooth. I snap to the middle and come up to the, up on the uh, uh, Y plane. Okay. Uh, that's just a guide. So then I'm going to take a. Well, let's say I want to make a. Uh, line. I'm just going to go in here, and uh, circle. In order to draw a line that's equidistant from both sides, I'm going to draw a circle there and trim trim off those. So is the Delete. cross point in the side of that circle going to be the uh, the radius, I mean the, the end of your gear, of the gear tooth? Yes. Uh, where's, where's, ah, there it is. There's delete. Okay. So if I take this line and I come, wait, why are you snapping like that? I don't want you to snap. So then it seems it seems a lot of this is just like if you're doing design with a piece of paper and, and pen where you make guidelines that you then erase and stuff like that. Yes, exactly. Ah, no, 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 stop that. Um, one of my little problems with this computer is it's a little bit slow, so it takes a minute for uh, it to do things where I'm used to slightly faster machines. Um, I'm going to do an extend. No, nope. sorry, set boundary objects. There we go. Now, uh, mirror command. No, nope. mirror command. Select objects to mirror. I'm going to select a mirror plane. It's there. And there I mirror oh, the perfect. other side. Okay, so now you have one tooth of the gear. You just do that like yeah. 50 times more and you're good. Exactly. So, but if I want to, uh, so yeah, how many do you think that would go around? Let's do an array command. That would be uh, A array polar. Um, I'm going to select the objects to array. That's that. Here's my center. Uh, let's say uh, 19. Um, there we go. And you have a, there's a gear. There is a gear. So then I would, um, you know, take out my guidelines. Um, you can, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but the easiest way, trim, select objects to trim. Oh, right. You have to get rid of these lines in here or else you're going to end up with gears that fall, teeth that fall right, off as exactly. soon as you lift the laser out. Okay. Select objects to trim. So you can go in here, pull all this stuff out. Okay. And then how, when you're doing the other gear that lines up with this, how do you make sure that you have this, the right teeth to fit in that? If you are actually doing real gear, this is not real gear okay. design. If you're doing real gear design, there's a lot of rules to follow. Okay. Um, because every plane on a gear is 
designed to meet and mesh with ev every plane on its uh, mating teeth. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually for the orrery that I'm building, I am uh, working with some pre-designed gear shapes, uh, teeth shapes, which then I'm holding to, you know, you have to know that if the teeth is this tall and this long and this wide, uh, you if you want 19 teeth, the circle is this. Your, your circle is this big. Okay. Right, and I'm so using you let the, the, the table you formula want to, use to to determine the size of your of your gear. Yes. As a whole. This is merely an aesthetic gear. Okay. Um, this is quick and dirty to demonstrate basics. Super quick and dirty. And okay. now that I have gotten rid of my circle, I can no longer snap to the middle of it. Uh, and I did 19, so it's actually it would be very difficult for me to draw the circle from the middle. This would be a weird gear. But but this is ex this is exactly you know how I build build something from scratch. The software is really really intuitive. I really love using it. And then uh, so I take this and actually uh, I'd make sure it's all in a printing layer, which would be just uh, one cut here. So it's just like a photo, Photoshop has multiple layers, you have backgrounds and different layers on top of that. It's the same kind of concept here, I assume. Exactly. Uh, and so then I choose print. Oh, um, really? It's that easy? It's that easy. <laughs> um, I choose my parameters here and say print. And then this will actually open up in Trotex job control. So this will turn whatever your, your CAD file into something that, the, to the language that the cutter speaks without you having to really understand anything about how that stuff works. Exactly. The only thing I want to change right now is the velocity of the cut. I'm going to cut quarter inch plex. So I want it to, uh, 0.7 inches per second is too fast. I'm going to go to 0.45 inches per second. Okay. So um, how, how do you learn that stuff? Is that something that just kind of you have experience, or is there a guide? Or every laser cutter is everybody who owns a laser cutter ends up kind of building their own uh, their own database uh, okay. of notes of what works for what materials. Um, cast versus extruded acrylic can have different cut speeds, uh, especially if you've got um, black acrylic, which has a lot of carbon in it, mm -hmm. requires different cutting speeds. Wood, different kinds of woods, plywoods, um, MDFs. They all they all need different stuff, and you you kind of learn it as you go. You fi you figure out trial by experience. Okay. Exactly. Now, now it's going to get noisy because I need to turn on the machine so this can start to talk to the machine. So we're going to apologize in advance for the bad sound. We're going to apologize for the bad sound. Let's turn on Sorry, the machine. Guys. There's a lot of fans involved with this. There's a lot of smoke, and so there's a lot of fans, and that's only one of the fans. I like I like where this is going. Okay, yeah. so. Send it to the machine. Let's let's watch this bad boy. Okay, so um, I first have to. This machine has to start up, and I have to set its depth. Oh, okay. We're back at the laser cutter. We're back to, we've we've <laughs> rotated one more time. Big move. Yes. So now I'm going to line up the material in the cutter. And you just position it at the origin. I do. You okay. can you can position it anywhere, as you'll see. Um, you can. So now I'm bringing the platen up okay. so that the laser is at the right depth. Depending on the material, the laser has to be at a very specific height away from the material. So why is this thing a grid underneath? Is that so it can suck smoke out? Uh, no, it's actually so that it's a, it's, a, it's a perfectly level surface, the honeycomb, mm -hmm. that you can't really burn because very little of it's exposed oh. to the material. And thus it doesn't transfer heat back to the material. Okay, so you don't get scorch marks on the bottom of the material. Precisely. So, so you set that thing to the height that you need. When that thing falls over, it's at the right height. <laughs> Sometimes it's the simple stuff. Isn't that great? So, there you go. Bingo. That's at the right height now. And my origin, I can now set the origin kind of wherever I want, but I'm gonna set it back up close to the edge, right there. Okay. And now, we are ready to cut. I'm going to send the file from over here. Okay. I forgot one thing, which is that's only one part of the exhaust. I have another exhaust, which actually does all the drawing. So here we go. Yo dog, I like fans. It's about to get louder. Okay. Wow. That's a lot of fans. Okay. That is a bright light. <clears throat> so is this burning all the way through? It should be. Wow. It's much faster than 3D printing.
And it's done. That was easy. <sighs> I hear myself think again. All right. So let's see if we chose the settings correctly. We did oh, it! It just lifts off! Look at that. That's awesome. And there's the gear. That's so, uh, yeah, I... I and you peel your film off. And it's actually, with a laser cutter, you, you learn sometimes you want to peel the stuff off early, sometimes you want to peel it off late. Like uh, if it's a lot of tiny little parts, you want to peel off the stuff before first. Before you cut, yeah. Because I've spent hours peeling stuff off. There's nothing better than getting a Kickstarter for something and then having to peel off hours and hours worth of uh, little tiny pieces of, of acrylic protector. This is fantastic. Thank you so much, Adam. And, Absolutely. Uh, we'll have to come up with some projects to use the laser cutter while you have it in here. I have a couple. I have a couple of projects lined up right away. Fantastic. Thanks so much. We'll have more on tested very soon. See you guys later. Thanks for coming. Keep cutting. Bye. <laughs> Always be cutting. Always be cutting. <laughs>